Hey everyone, welcome back to Gravity Sketch Beginner Tutorial Creating a Set of Headphones. This will be our third session, and in the past two, you've learned how to create objects here in the room, navigate, scale yourself through the room, edit materials, environments, and create content. So now what we're ready to do is start actually ideating and sketching on the subject matter, which is a pair of headphones. While I could just start sketching in space, I like to bring in a little bit of context. So if we go to our hamburger menu and go down here to the import tab, we can find a built-in model of a human head, which is going to be perfect for sketching the subject matter of headphones. When I click with my index trigger on that human head, I'll get a preview of my import. This will work the same for built-in models or things you upload to landing pad, but for now, let's just focus on the head. Clicking these arrows in the preview menu will rotate the model around its relative axis. But once I like where it's at, I'll just click this confirm check mark, and now that object will be added to the room. Like we talked about last time, I can use the flashlight to edit some of the lighting to make it just a little bit easier to see some of those features on the face. Now what this does is gives me just a little bit more context of a scale human head that I can sketch over top of and use to evaluate things like human factors and ergonomics. Because I know my headphones are going to be symmetrical, I'll go to my hamburger menu and turn on the mirror plane. I can change that mirror style through this little tab here, but it's important to note that I'm actually sketching across the right mirror plane. The room's mirror plane will always be along this green axis. Now that I have my context in here and my mirror plane active, anything I create on one side of the face will be mirrored to the other. Another quick tip that you may have noticed me use a second ago is Smart Move. If I align my controllers in line with one another, that axis will pop up and any object I grab will be snapped to move only along that axis. This Smart Move feature is something that you'll use quite a bit in Gravity Sketch. It allows you just a little bit more precision in where you're moving your object, and when you're moving it relative to the mirror plane, this is important so that it doesn't get kicked off axis. In this case, I just moved my head down to the origin so that any object I create is very close to the origin when I export it to another software. I like the look of black ink sketching, so I'll use my color wheel over here on my left hand to get a flat black material for my ink. And with that black material, I can start creating some ink strokes to just ideate around some different forms. It's really important to note that while this is 3D, it's not meant to be restrictive. This is a creative process. Be loose, have fun with it, and remember, you're trying to find design intent. You're not necessarily executing on design intent at this point. I like to keep it quick, rough, and simple. Sometimes I'll grab existing objects that I've already created and duplicate them out. I can do that pretty quickly and simply by grabbing it with a side trigger and clicking the index trigger to make a duplicate. Combining this with smart move and scaling, it becomes pretty quick and easy to make offset forms from one another. To scale an object, first we'll grab it and then hold both side grip triggers at the same time and move them closer to one another to make it smaller or further apart to make it larger. Remember, the sketch of this phase isn't meant to be perfect, it's just to find your design intent and get that idea recorded in 3D. If I want to refine, I can always grab a stroke, edit, and connect those points. Because I have the mirror plane active, putting that point on the mirror plane will actually weld it and create a continual curve across the center. I like to make use of any existing objects I have in the room, so I'll just copy, duplicate that backwards. I might resize or edit things that I've already created, mess with those points to give it just a bit more conformity to the head. But all in all, I think this is kind of already encapsulating a first idea for a set of headphones. It's simple, it's not too crazy, but I do now have 3D geometry that I can reference either in an additional software or I can reference in a more refined sketch here within Gravity Sketch. At this point, I typically start the iteration phase. I start ideating on a lot of other options. But in order to do that, I need to make sure my room is organized. I'll go in my hamburger menu down here to Layers, and by selecting a layer, I can change the name of it. So this first one I'll call Rough Sketch. I'll make another one, and I will call that the Head. So I can grab those objects and drop those into the layers. When I do that, it'll move that object to that specific layer. By clicking that lock icon, it makes it so that it's no longer accessible. Now, this is going to help me organize everything else that I create in this room. I'll name a third layer Refine Sketch, and then I'll go over this rough sketch later on in the process with a stroke tool to just have a bit more clarity and a bit more iteration on that specific object. But now I'll grab that first sketch, move it out of the way so that I can create a whole new concept over top of that existing head. This is where Gravity Sketch really shines as a creation tool. You're able to ideate as quickly as you would with thumbnail sketches of pen and paper, but you can do that in 3D with infinitely more context, infinitely more usability when you transfer this to another software. You're thinking in 3D, you're creating an actual object, 
not a sketch of an object. Rather than having a 2D representation, you're actually thinking through the 3D form, the way it sits on the head, all those various factors that require a lot more jumping through hoops when you're actually sketching in 2D. But again, what you're seeing here is really the same process that I went through with the first pair of headphones. I'm just doing it in a slightly different way, trying to get some different thoughts out, trying to come up with a different design direction so that when I get to the end, I can evaluate these rough sketches and choose which one to move forward with. And I'll put some finishing touches on this concept here, just duplicating, scaling a few more parts to give it thickness. But all in all, that's the second concept. And if you look at the timer real quick, that took me less than a minute. And now I have a 3D, relatively accurate scale and design intent version of another set of headphones. And now I can move on to a third. And if you think about the design process as its traditional phases, going through uh, finding problems, iterating on solutions to those problems, and in the case of product design, uh, in, in physical product design, giving it actual form and solutions to that, it really is amplified by Gravity Sketch as a tool. We have all of the freedom that we would have in 2D creation, all of the ease of creating forms and coming up with ideas. We're not ushered down a single route like we are with some softwares in CAD. Uh, and there's not too much time associated with coming up with these ideas, so you don't have that unfair bias that you get just from investing time and realization and execution. But what you do have and what you retain is these 3D physical assets, and they're digital assets, that inform your designs and make your designs more well thought out. Uh, you get all the advantage of the 3D workflow, but you don't have any of the restrictions associated with traditional CAD software. But let's get back to the ideation. I'm gonna do a fourth version here just to show you guys the process again, make sure that it's obvious what I'm doing. I'm using the ink tool to create these lines and create these strokes. Then I'm grabbing those objects and moving them, rescaling them, and just making sure that everything's where I want it. Here I'm duplicating that object with smart move, moving it outwards, scaling it down so that it's a true echo of the outer form. Uh, one of the things I wanted to think through for this concept is specifically how these forms are repeated inwards uh, like they were in that first concept, but just done a little bit differently. And now on the second rough pass, I start to think through some different physical aspects like how that overhead band or strap is going to be integrated into the rest of that form. So here again, just making strokes, going into edit mode, moving and deleting those points, which is as simple as just grabbing them like an object and clicking the delete button. That will actually dissolve those points if they're in between two others or delete them outright if they're on an end. So I'm just gonna add a few finishing touches here, but really at the end of this, we have four rough sketch ideas of sets of headphones that we can take forward and start to do some refined sketching over top of. So this session has been all rough sketching and coming up with various design intent. In the next one, we'll look at point stroke tool and how we can use uh, layer opacity to come back over top of these rough sketches and end up with something a bit more refined and ultimately lead us towards surfacing in Gravity Sketch. Thanks again for joining, and I'll see you guys next time.